Hello and welcome to part two of this series of videos. These are a set of videos I'm planning to make aimed principally at those beginning in glass engraving but you might find one or two tips in there if you're somebody who's already engraving. If you haven't seen part one yet that was all about the different types of rotary tools that you can use because principally what I engrave with are rotary tools. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description if I can figure out how to do that. This part is going to be about the bits, the burrs, that you then put into the rotary tool to allow you to engrave the glass. Now I'm going to break this down into three sections. The first ones we're going to look at are diamond burrs. Diamond burrs are the ones that take away the most glass. They cut quickly into the glass and because of the way they scratch and mark the surface, they make the lightest areas in your engraving. So if you're taking away a lot of glass and you're wanting a light area, or you want to put in an area of high light, then the diamond bar is what we use. Now, most of us, when we start engraving, we go on to Amazon or eBay or any other uh, online retailer, and what we do, we, we buy little sets of diamond bars in a little green box, and they're great. They come in all sorts of different shapes. I don't know if you can maybe I don't know if you're able to see that, but you have loads of different shapes and sizes and styles and they're brilliant. Um, the only thing is, if you're actually starting off engraving, you don't need those. That's not to say they're a bad thing, you can do things with them. They work fine, they're great. But if you're looking to say, what do you actually need to start engraving? The burrs that you need are the spherical burrs. And I would recommend that you would try to get yourself uh, a large, a medium and a small, I don't know if you can see that, spherical diamond burrs. Now these are the cheap ones that come in the green boxes off of Amazon or whatever. They are very inexpensive and they work just fine if you are starting to engrave glass. So three spherical diamond burrs in various sizes. The other diamond bar I would say you definitely need to get if you're starting engraving is a rat tail. Again, this is a fairly cheap one, came in one of the wee green boxes, but you'll need a rat tail for doing fine lines or putting in little areas of highlight or even if you want to do a type of stippling, the rat tail is the bar that you need. But that's it. In terms of diamond bars, those I think are the ones that you need to start engraving. And they, they really are very cheap if you go to, if you go and get one of these living boxes. If you decide that you're enjoying en engraving glass and that you want to maybe upgrade your burrs, you can get the same burrs in a slightly better quality by going to a specialist online supplier. So I've got a set here of five spherical bars that I got from a specialist supplier. They're a slightly higher quality than the, the cheaper ones that I've got. But they do the same job. And although they're a slightly higher quality, these ones still weren't all that terribly expensive. I think they were just around about two pounds each. So five spherical bars and a rat's tail bar. And to be honest, I can do Probably 70% of the engraving I do with just these. Now, if you're asking yourself, why do I need to get the slightly better quality ones? Because as I said, the, the, the cheap ones work perfectly well. You can engrave perfectly well with them. The difference really is in the quality of the diamond finish on them. If I can compare a cheaper spherical bar to the slightly more expensive one, the difference is in the density of the diamond coating on the tip and also the, the grit that's involved. This is a much coarser diamond than this one, so you're going to get a smoother and finer finish with the higher quality bit. Now if you, like me, have got all of these wonderful shapes and sizes of diamond burrs, have you wasted your money? No, you have not. These are brilliant. They are great fun. I quite often see people asking, what's this shape of bar for? And actually that's not 
a relevant question. The only thing that limits what you can do with these bars is really your imagination. So this disc, for example, has got a nice carved edge and you can imagine cutting this way into the glass with it to make little daisy petals. Or maybe I could draw it across the glass and make a, a ripple texture with it. The other ones that are quite interesting, that we've, sometimes you'll get these little inverted cone shaped ones. They're great, you can make like little quite delicate foliage shapes with them. The only thing that's limiting what you do with these is your imagination. Don't think if you've gone out and bought lots of these, you've wasted your money, you haven't. Just have a look at them and play with them and try out different things and see what you can do with them. But as I say, if you're looking for the minimum that you really have to have for engraving, it's those three spherical bars and the rat's tail bar. So those are all the diamond bars that we can talk about. The next category of bar are the stones. You can actually get stones in a lot of different colours. You can get orange ones, um, which I don't like to use on the glass. I think they're a bit too coarse. But I use the green ones, which I think are probably, probably silicon carbide. I use them a lot. The cut, they leave a slightly less rough texture than the diamond bars do. So the final look of the engraved glass is slightly darker. It's a slightly smoother finish. They come in a whole range of sizes. Again, that was one that came in, a, I got a big bag of these uh, off of Amazon. It was inexpensive and you know, that works really well if you've got a big area that you're trying to engrave in one go. But quite often with these green burrs, what you'll need are slightly smaller size. That one came in a set from, provided directly from Dremel. Or if you go to the specialist suppliers, you can get these really quite tiny little green stones, which are obviously ideal for getting in to get more detail out on your engraving. But again, they still produce a slightly smoother finish than the di diamond bar, and therefore it looks slightly darker in the finished engraving. You get pink stones as well. I haven't tried any of them. Feel free to give it a go. But certainly the green ones you're going to need to get yourself a couple of sizes of these green silicon carbide, I think it is, stones. The other stone I would definitely say you should try to get hold of is a white Arkansas stone. This one here is a tiny one. I don't know if you can see that. Tiny little white Arkansas stone. That again produces a smoother finish than the green stone does. So if you're trying to get something which is engraved but still quite dark, you can use that or you can use it for pre-polishing. So you, let's say you want to put a darker area into a bit you've already engraved, you can smooth it down with this. So that's a white Arkansas stone, but the, these ones can be quite expensive to get hold of. Um, I would also suggest if you're engraving with this to work dry because I think the stone lasts longer. If you work wet, it seems to wear down very quickly. There is an alternative to the proper white Arkansas stone, which you can sometimes get hold of. It Again, they come in big boxes. And these are actually dental polishing burrs, uh, which come from China. They're not white Arkansas. You might see them sold as white Arkansas stone, but they're not. They're actually a ceramic. But the finish they produce is actually very similar to the white Arkansas stone. Very cheap, they're quite robust. So it's, if that's what you've got, they will work just fine for you. So those are the stones and I would, to recap again, I would recommend a couple of sizes of the green stone and a white Arkansas stone to make up your set as a beginner. And that just leaves us with the polishing rubbers. Now polishing rubbers are still abrasive, they will still remove glass. This one again is a cheap one, um, got a big bag off of Amazon. Uh, very inexpensive and actually it will take out quite a lot of glass. It will leave a definite rippled effect on the glass but what it leaves is a very smooth finish so it's quite a dark looking finish and then I can take 
This, which is a slightly smoother polishing rubber, go over that again and it comes back with a shine on it. In order to get shading in your engraving, you will need to get yourself some polishing rubbers. The ones that you can get from Amazon or eBay or any of these other suppliers are perfectly acceptable. I work with them almost all the time. If you go to a specialist supplier, however, you will have a choice of getting um, discs or cylinders and also a choice of the grit, if you like, of the polishing rubber. From hard ones through to very soft grey ones which will polish up your glass quite nicely. Now the only time I have actually found it useful to go to the specialist supplier for these polishing rubbers is for these tiny little pencil polishers. So inside this special mandrel there is a rubber polisher. This one happens to be a green one. And the mandrel is designed this way so that I can insert the polisher and just have a little bit showing at the end. And obviously, given the size of that, it's ideal for polishing very fine, tiny little areas of your engraving. And as the rubber wears down, I can pull out a little bit more of it. This one, I do have different colours of the rubber for. There's a nice little grey one. And for this, I did have to go to a specialist supplier. Now, I will put a link in the description here to a couple of suppliers I've used in the past. I am not affiliated to any of them. They're just people who have provided me with a good service and helped me out in the past. So feel free to approach them. If not, go to your own supplier. It's fine. I don't get any money out of either way. But those are my recommendations for what you would get for a, a starter kit for engraving glass. The three spherical diamond burrs, one rat's tail diamond burr, a couple of sizes of green stone, a white Arkansas stone, a disc polisher, a cylinder polisher, and if you can stretch it, a little pencil rubber there. With those, you can do almost all of the engraving that you will ever want to do. Of course, you can get extra ones over and above. This um, little flame shape is quite useful from time to time. And as I say, I have lots of fun playing with the other shapes of bars that I have just to see what they can all do. And that's all I have to say about the bits and bars to go into your rotary tool so that you can start engraving. If it's been useful to you, then consider subscribing. I will be doing more videos. The next one I do, I think, will cover how we use some of these bars to do a light surface engraving on glass. So if you click subscribe and click the notify button, you'll find out, find out about that one when it comes out. Other than that, I hope it's been helpful and thank you.